created form, the way we we are created as witnesses. We are, we didn't start this off. We just witness it as we go along, and then we <clears throat> from that we can uh, do things that are not perfect. The past tense is called perfect, not perfect in the sense of everything exactly right. No, perfect in the sense that the act is complete. That's nothing when when it's in the past tense, it's done. You, you know, you can't undo the past. It's already done. So that's what we mean by because I'm and I'm using that term. I don't usually use that terminology, but I'm using it because I know you may be looking in books, other books, and uh, uh, you run into words. So I want to make sure that you know that I'm not de uh, denying those, that terminology. But I do bring it back home to language that we are used to using. We're not used to using terms <coughs> like, like perfect as far as action is concerned. We're not used to using. Uh, 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 that to refer to the time. Tense is referring to time of the action, all right? And everything in the human life is what? Action. Not only everything in human action, in human life is action, everything in creation is in action itself. Even this rostrum I'm standing behind right now, there's activity going, we can't see it, but there's activity going, the atoms are moving around in here, and, in, and then within each atom there's more activity. Right? Within each atom we have the activity of the protons uh, and the Electron. electrons, all right? And the neutron is sitting right in the middle there, holding things together. So, praise be to Allah. So, uh, what I did, was able to continue doing today <coughs> was to use the, the red markers to indicate the vowels. And that's just to help you to see it. Uh, there's not, it's not necessary to use two different colors. Uh, to write Arabic, but so that to help you uh, observe what we're talking about when we talk about what is representing the sound. And all these marks up here do what? They represent sound. They <coughs> represent sound. They do not make the sound. You have to make the sound. They represent the sound, all right? And they only mean what has been agreed upon to mean. That's in any language. And of course, that, that I'm saying that so you understand as you try to learn Arabic, Understand that you're not trying to learn something that's that's uh, just come out the sky. It's what they have agreed upon. Are they? They have agreed upon, and that's just that. And so we come into that same agreement. Then we said to be Arabs. Then, and Arab is a person who speaks Arabic. All right. <laughs> okay. I know you thought it was uh, a certain <laughs> physical feature, but no. An Arab, Arab is one who speaks Arabic. Okay. Okay. So now. Uh, we have done past tense and present tense. And present tense is considered to be imperfect, meaning that it's not done yet. It, it, in Arabic, the, what, what we call present tense can either be uh, 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 going on at the time, I'm sorry, imperfect, excuse me, imperfect. Present tense is imperfect, and so is command. That's what I, that's what I wanted to share. Both, they both share imperfect, meaning that they are not complete yet. This is complete. When we, when any, any word that's what, that would, would uh, fit the, the paradigm of this column over here, it would be considered to be perfect. Okay, past is done. All right. So, and then uh, if you remember, after we did the past tense, then we showed you something in common. That's why I put this back up here. You said, well, you had that up before? Yes, I know. Uh, uh, you, you, uh, you, you get up in the morning and you're the same person today you were yesterday. You keep, that's how you maintain language. You know, you maintain your identity. If you don't maintain your identity, then you get up one day, you may be somebody else, okay? So the language is like it. So we, we are repeating because that's what is next. That's how we learned English. We learned English by repetition. Learned your own name. Learned who you are. Of course, we've had that experience twice, didn't we? Most of us, <laughs> most of us, no, we were born, they gave us one name, and then when we were blessed to go into religion, and, and uh, Imam Muhammad came in the office, then we were either given or, or selected a new name. So we know about the name business more than once. And, and when it comes to the name, you don't even, if someone called you by the old name, you frown at them. You turn around and tell them, I'm so and so, -and -so. I'm, Del I'm Abdullah, brother. Okay? And if he says, well, I remember, I don't care what you remember, I'm telling you, but I don't want to call you, but then don't call me nothing. <laughs> I haven't had that experience myself. If you don't want to call me that, I've been knowing you, and you want to, then, then I, I don't know, what, I, what, don't call me anything at all. You just don't call me, okay? So, and that's the way, we, and you know, that wasn't something that I came up with. 
The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that. He said a day would come when people wouldn't even speak to you if you call them by these old names, okay? And of course, we were waiting for the holy name then, weren't we? All right, okay. So now, the thing that we, that we have in common for all of the, of the present tense, these are just clues to help you, as you look at words, try to figure out what's happening. With the present tense, all of them have ya as a prefix, all right? Uh, and let me see, I don't I may, I may have made a mistake here, I'm not sure. Where am I? My, my paper. <laughs> no, uh, okay. Uh, I hope I did not. I, I, sometimes when you're in a hurry, you make mistakes. But all of them has a prefix of ya with the ya, and three of them have the dhamma on the ya. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm coming right back. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I just want to make sure that, you know, when you're in a rush and trying to. Okay, let's see, I got one, two, three. I got it right. Okay, I just want to make sure. Yeah. So the yeah, this is the, the letter with the two dots under it. So all of the present tense has the yeah in front of it. This is just to kind of help you. And you learn a little bit today, and you learn a little bit more next time, you learn a little bit more next time. And that's how I build it. You don't just sit down and take a, 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 a capsule of Arabic and swallow it, and now you, it's a little bit at a time. And you all put a spoonful in, in a glass of water like you do Kool-Aid. So, so I'm showing those things. So all of them, even though only three of them have uh, dumb, the rest of them have fat tat on them. You see this at the fat tab, but this is one, two, three, uh, form uh, two, I'm sorry, uh, uh, yeah, form two, three, and four have dhamma on it, and the rest of them have uh, fat tab, but all of them begin with yeah. Do you see anything else that you can, that you can say all of the uh, present tense form has, now that I've shown you that? So I'm going to come on, some of you look, look at it real hard, see what you, what you can see. That all of the present tense, I, show, I showed you how they all begin with the letter yeah, but just a different uh, vowel on The yeah. last letter. The last letter. All of the last letters have dhamma on it. That's correct. All of the last letters. So that kind of, if you, if you remember that, then you have learned to almost identify uh, the present tense already. Just remember, when you see something with yeah on it, you'll suspect that it might be present tense. It may not always be, but you'll suspect it, all right? And then once you start learning a little bit like then the dhamma on the end, and, and uh, that, so they all have that in common. We only have 10 forms up here, as I have told you before, but I repeat. We only have 10 forms up here. There are actually a possibility of 15 forms, uh, but uh, of the last five, uh, only uh, form 12 is, uh, is seen uh, without infrequency. The others are very rare. They're like archaic. Uh, uh, 11, uh, 13, 14, and 15 are very archaic. So you'll see them in books, but very seldom will you see any words coming from them. And from these forms that we have, these two columns that we've introduced already, from them can come other words. You can pluralize them. This is single. This is all single. We have you can pluralize them. You can even make nouns from them. We're not, we're, we're, that's the next part of this chart, is there are three different types of nouns. We have the internal noun, the active noun, and the passive noun. That would, all, that would be a part of this whole chart. You'd have a full conjugation then. If we had three more columns, we have three verb form, uh, three verb columns, which is past, present, and command. Command is also future. I use that term command because that's what is commonly used. But it's future, and if you, if you can agree that if it's a command, it hasn't been done already and it's not being done. If it's being done, then the, the, to give the command is redundant. If it's been done already, it's redundant. It means it's unnecessary. Man, I did that already. But you're telling me what to do. I did that. Um, or, or why are you telling me that you see me doing it already? You see what I'm saying? So it, it is the same as future tense. In other words, when the command is that means command means that it is ordered to come at a time later than the time that it's being said, okay? So in the command tense for form one, uh, we have if I'll or, or or it can be possibly uf uh, uf ul. What, as long as I have this here, I want to mention that this can also happen over here 
with uh, instead of this being fa'ala, it could be fu'ala. But the difference would be is that we wouldn't know then who is the doer, who did it. We have that we have reference to that like that in the Quran where it says um, Kulika in San Daifa. Kulika in San Daifa. Says man is created weak. But it doesn't say who did it. A lot of them take claims and he didn't say he made you weak. The Kulika, so when you see that term Kulika, it doesn't say and really what's happening is we are, that's the part, that's when we are creating ourselves. You know we are creators too. Our law is just the best of creators. All right. So now, uh, then we have uh, form two, which we're going to spend some time on form two, all the way, I mean, more emphasis on form two on the back, but this is what it looks like when it's command, meaning someone is telling you to do how, if they, what's the difference in telling you to do here and telling you to do here if, if it were the same word? In form two, what's happening in form two? That's what I'm asking. Anybody remember? The quantity. No, not quantity. The energy. The energy. The energy. Yeah, you you you're on the right. The energy, meaning meaning uh, uh, more energy is involved in it. So here, in form two, there's more energy involved in this command. It's like someone telling you work hard at it. Okay. All right. So, and I'm going to give you some examples to show you. Uh, but with form two, I have on the other side of the board today, all right? So, the energy in form two can be either, uh, be either intensive or extensive. I Means a whole lot of energy right now, or it's a whole, a whole lot of energy because it's done over a long period of time, or it's a whole lot of energy because more than one person is doing it, all right? So the, the extensive can be in two ways, either by time or the number of people doing it. Everybody understand that? We don't give you give some examples on the on the other side of the board, inshallah. All right. So uh, what's, who can look at command tense and see something that's common in all ten forms? In all ten sukun. Sukun what? On the end. On the last letter. Sukun on the last letter. They all have sukun on the last letter. All right. And of course, that last letter is the letter of the root word. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, infixes and prefixes. That's what we've been, what we're dealing in some, with some of these words: <coughs> infixes and prefixes. For instance, here's an infix: fail, fail. What's the infix? Well, I said, I'm, just, I'm just trying to check to see if you remember anything. Uh, to, you know, I told you words can be extended in three different ways: prefix, part. The, the alif, the ad, the, this, long, this is infix. It's, I mean, it's fixed, it's put in the middle of the word, somewhere either between the first, uh, first letter and the second letter, or between the second letter and the third letter. This time it's between the first and second letter, the fa and the ayin, and you have the alif in it. That's the infix. If it, if it came between the, the ayin and the lamb, then there would still be an infix. And, and where the infix is also gives us of information. Okay. Here, this is letting us know that this is a case where something is attempted. Here, up here, it was done, right? It's done. Well, that's all we have to do. It's done here. It's done with a lot of energy here. Here, it didn't necessarily get done, but he tried. Everybody understand that? So, man, did you do something? No, but I tried. Well, then that would be form three, all right? I'm just trying to break it down so that it, it, in the simplest way. All right, now, and by the way, if you have any questions as we go along, please ask them. And I want to do something else while, I, while I'm thinking about it right now. I'm going to put, I did this once before, but I'm going to put my phone number on the board again. 870 -589 -3589. That's for anyone who wants any any uh, tutoring or explanation. If we, if we get enough interest where people are calling on a regular basis, we can we can actually set up a class uh, and have it, uh, what we call conference call, and it's free. You can set up conference calls free. Now I'm saying that to you, and I'm gonna I'm gonna sidetrack just for a little here. I'm saying that to you because to try to 
warn us against 